before was part of the matching. Uh, the equation of y equals 2x plus 1. y equals 2x plus 1. So if I'm going to match it to a graph, let's see what kind of graph I would expect to see. <coughs> okay. Um, if you've really been catching on, like you're just a really quick learner, uh, then you might recognize this as the what? Y-intercept. Y-intercept, so there it is. And then this as the what? Slope. The slope meaning 2 over 1. Any whole number can be written over 1 as a fraction. So we're going to go up 2 and to the right 1. Or as I like to think of it really is every time I go to the right 1, I'm going to go up 2. I like that horizontal vertical thing because it kind of reminds me that the y value is the result of the x value. I go over, that's my x, and it's going to result in going up 2. So our graph should look like that. And when we look at the book, letter B has a graph just like that. If you didn't quite catch that yet, you should never look at a graph ever again and think, I don't know, I don't know what to do. But you can always graph a graph because a graph is made of what? Points. And you find those points how? Do the equation a little more specific. What does that mean to do the equation? Plug in numbers. Plug in numbers for x. For x. Usually x. Could you plug a number in for y? You could plug in a number for y, it would be a little more work. Kind of silly. I could plug in a number for y, like uh, 5. It's just one of those aside things. I can solve for x, right? I can subtract 1 from both sides, divide by 2, x is 2. So I just figured out that x is 2 and y is 5. So that's, that's legitimate. But usually we plug in the values for x and get them out to y because it's so easy to set up to do that. <coughs> set up just like that. So if we didn't know what to do, we can always, always find some points. Do we always want to be finding points just randomly? Mm -hmm. What do you think? You just want to find random points every time you graph, graph a graph? Mm -hmm. no. Maybe for a line that's OK, but for those curvy graphs, which is every other kind of graph is a curve, Besides lines, right? Once something's not a line, it's a curve. And those curves are a lot harder to nail down than a line. A line, two points, draw a straight line, you got a line. But for a curve, you know, where is the, the curviest part of that curve? What, what's going on with this curve? We're going to want to have those strategies, right? So uh, one strategy is for a line, plug in 0 for x, and then look at this guy that you're going to multiply x by think what would be an easy value to plug in for x. In this case, they're all pretty easy. Right? As long as we don't choose a fraction for x, we should be fine. I could just plug in a 1. 2 times 0 is 0, plus 1 is 1. 2 times 1 is 2, plus 1 is 3. We have two points. Okay, But jumping on board with uh, this, this slope, this rate of change, this delta y over delta x business is a very helpful thing. Because it also helps us to understand how this could be the story, or this could be related to the story of uh, so and so grows two inches per year. This is a, maybe maybe a tree grow two inches per year and start at one inch. And we we when we start to see this as our rate of change, and this as a quote start. And it helps us to take these equations and think about them in maybe a real life situation. All right, you ready for that? Um, questions about that at all? Questions, welcome.
let's start the, the shortcut way and then we'll go back to the points and hopefully those of you who might be still finding, just finding points and finding points and finding points you do kind of merge over to thinking of this as the what? The y-intercept. The y-intercept, the y-axis at three. Maybe we'll, we'll bridge the gap here by looking at somebody who chose to find a point, okay? So the person who finds a point, they've just plugged in zero for x, right? That's the y-intercept. We know the y-intercept will be when x is zero, and they found that y is three, okay? But because this, these equations are written in this form, right, this form means y equals mx plus b, a number times x plus a number. Whatever, if I choose zero for x, whatever this is, this is gonna turn into a zero and all that's left is this number. So I always know this number is going to be the point where we cross the y-axis. So we're gonna have three. And then we have a, a slope of what? One over five. One over five, right? Which means we go over five. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, and go up one. I could have gone over one, or two, or three, or four, but if I go over one, or two, or three, or four, I'm gonna wind up trying to graph some fraction. Okay? That's why we move over five, because if I plug in five, what happens? If I plug in, go up one. If I plug in five for x, like what, what about that makes my calculations easy? Like, Five is divisible by five, right? And, and whatever number we put here is going to get divided by five. So we want to make sure that's a five or a 10 or a 15 or negative five, negative 10, negative 15, 20, negative 50, 100,000, and five. Right? Anything that's divisible by five is going to make this come out a whole number. And when five gets multiplied by one fifth, we get one plus three is four. So my five cancels this five, all that's left is one. If this was a 10, then we'd have one times two left over. If this was a 15, we'd have one times three left over. Okay. Every time we move over five, we just move up another one. And go with my straight line tool. Questions about that? Why intercept? We got a slope. I don't want you to forget about this. I don't want you to forget that the reason that we can use this pattern is because we've worked so hard to understand how a function works and that you put in an x and you get out a y, and why we choose a certain x's because the denominator is a particular number, or we want it to be, as Blake said, divisible by whatever this number is. But we've done it so many times, we, the reward now is we can use a little shortcut. We can go y-intercept, slope, we have two points, we have a line. Great. Wait, so this one needs to find the x-intercept? Did I say x-intercept? Yes. Okay, I misspoke. Y-intercept. Or is that part of the question you're saying? Yeah. Like, ah, okay, so that's a good question. So we want to find the x-intercept. I didn't read the whole problem. Mm. Okay, so the y-intercept, what's true about the y-intercept? Hint, look here. What's true about the y-intercept? Every y-intercept is? Um, that it's where the line crosses the, the, the y. Mm -hmm. The y-axis? Y-axis. True. That's true. Okay. That's true. Looking for something a little, I mean, it's related to that, but just a little bit different, Sean. Well, it's a, uh, plug in x, plug in 0 for x, and you'll get the y. So when you plug in zero for x, you get the y-intercept, right? Because that will make a point where, every point is made of, a, of an x and a y, right? So that will make a point that has an x of zero, guaranteeing the point is on the y-axis. So what about points like the x-intercept, right? Where is the x-intercept? On the what? X-axis. X-axis. So what do you think is true about points on the x-axis? Great. Oh, the y in it. Y y is going to be zero. So now I just need to kind of work backwards. We were just kind of talking about this before, where y is the zero now. Y is the zero. So if y is zero in this equation, can we figure out what x is? Minus three? Did 
Now negative 3 equals 1 fifth x. Chuck? Divide by 1 fifth. Divide by 1 fifth. I'm going to multiply by 5 over 1. Same thing. Multiply this by 5. And x is? Negative 15. Negative 15. x is negative 15. I can't fit it on my graph, but I know that somewhere over there, there's going to be a point at negative 15 comma 0. The y-intercept, x is equal to 0. x-intercept, y is equal to 0. Thanks for reminding us of that, Brady. When would we not need a y-intercept? Um, well, did the question ask for it? Well, the, the question just asks us to graph it and find the x-intercept. Oh. But I mean, to graph it, don't we, should we know? Yeah. I mean, think about it. If we know the slope, that's great. But the slope is like a reference for getting from one point to another point. So we need a point to start with. You know what I'm saying? The y-intercept. We'll start, start with the y-intercept of 9. There it is. Remember, you have plenty of zero for x. I get nine for y. Zero comma nine. And the slope is negative eight thirds, which means that uh, every time I go over three, right? Go over three, plug in a three for x, six for x, nine for x. Uh, every time I go over three, what happens? Go down eight. Go down eight. That's going to put us right there, because eight down from nine is. So, you know, every three seconds that go by, we lose eight inches of water. Every three weeks, we lose eight pounds. Every three hours, we lose eight dollars. Right? Losing. Negative rate of change. We have a line. Okay, and last is 25, I think. Good, word problem. 25 is about apples. Um, so there's a picture here. It says that uh, admission, let's abbreviate that, admission is $5. Okay? So you walk up to the little apple farm. apple uh, orchard and you walk up here and just for them to let you you know through the gate here they're not going to let you through until you do what pay five dollars pay five dollars so you pay them five dollars if you pick zero apples how much does it cost you five dollars you pay five dollars just to be there then it's 75 cents per pound of apples that's not a bad price but you have to pick a lot of apples to make it worth that five dollars so 75 cents, by the way, that's 75 cents. And this is what? Well, I'm just talking about how I'm writing this, the notation here. This is 75 cents. What is this? 75 cents. This is 75 cents? This is 75 cents? What does it say? No, it's uh, point seven. 0.75 of one cent. Yeah. Right? So you gotta get rid of the Next time you're at the store, watch out for this sign. It's like uh, two for 99 cents. What is that telling you? How much does it cost? Oh, about Less one than cent. a penny. Less than a penny for two of the things. Okay? So you should take them up on whatever they're selling. You should buy two of them for less than one penny. Okay? So keep 
keep an, keep an eye out for that deal. Anyway, it's 75 cents per pound of apple. That's our, what's the word that starts with R? Raise. Raise. Every time I get a pound, the cost goes up 75 cents. Okay. Uh, so, why is the uh, total cost, it's how much like all together comes out of my wallet, uh, well, our rate is 75 cents, right? 0.75 times x, where x is what? Uh, uh, pounds, pounds. pounds of apples. Pounds of apples. Uh, and anything else? Plus five. Plus five, because we have to say that five dollars, like for, for doing nothing, for zero apples, zero pounds of apples, five dollars. Start at five dollars, work your way up from there at seventy-five cents times the number of pounds of apples. Um, Carolyn, you increase your model's cost of apples and that's all they ask for. Oh, this is a graph, a graph the equation. If anybody graph this, I'd like to rewrite it like this. Y equals three fourths x plus five. I do because it's a fraction and I can get my slopes as fractions. So we start at $5. The cost of this whole ordeal is $5 to start with. And then we can look at this as every four pounds that I pick, I'm going to spend how much? Every four pounds, how much am I going to spend? $8. If you count the admission. If you count the $5, you'll pay $8. So you pay $3 on top of the admission every four pounds. That I buy, I, or that I pick, I have to pay three dollars. Four pounds means three additional dollars. And yeah. <coughs> if you didn't uh, write that as a fraction, you could just say, say okay, y equals 0.75 x plus five. So I'll, I'll start at five. I'll pick one pound of apples, and that will add on 75 cents to the cost of this thing. So. Well, it should be at 575, right? Which is what that looks about to be. That looks like it's about 575, 5.75. Right? Yeah. All right, I don't know. Okay. Questions? Feeling better about graphing? Yeah. Okay. Well, let's show how confident we are in graphing skills. One graphing question today. So let's uh, try y-axis. Um, as a super fast reminder of why the shortcut works, uh, I know that I'm going to get two if x is, zero. x is zero, x is zero, then y is two. That's why we always know that this guy right here is uh, going to translate to a point on the y-axis. Uh, then I know that if I move over three, I'll go up four, two, three, four. Okay. Well, when I could move over one or I could move over two, why am I moving over three? Um, because if you if you multiply three over one, you can cross off the three mm. and then so you get six. If x is three, then look at this nice nice thing that happens. The threes cancel each other. You get four plus two, and that's six. One, two, three, four, five, two, five. Right there. And there we go. If I were to plug in six, go over another three, then how many would I go up? Four. Go up four more. Four more from six. What's four more up from six? Ten. If I were to go back to negative three, <coughs> then how far would I go? Go down four. So we go down four. Down four from, from here. Remember, it's going back from zero, so we'd be at negative two. Because what's happening?
happening there is that that thing that we plug in for x is getting divided by 3. So that just leaves whatever that 3 was multiplied by, right? What I mean by that is if we put a 6 here, divide the 3 into the 6, that just leaves the 2. Right? It's a factor of 2 that was in 6 when that 3 is uh, divided out. We put a, a 15 here. We divided out that factor of 3. The factor of 5 is left. right? That's, then we multiply 4 by 5. Right? We're going up 20. That's 5 fours. Right? We're going to move up 4 5 times. We do that incrementally. We just move over three every time, up four, over three, up four, over another three, up another four, so on and so on. All right. Did I beat that dead horse enough, you think? You know what the saying means? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I think it's pretty simple. The horse is dead. Stop beating it. Uh, here we go. This is a review for Quest tomorrow.